Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I want to show you a little bit of work in progress of a goblin creature kind of battle. So I was thinking of this idea where goblins fighting uh, men. Um, and the, the main purpose, really what started, um, I actually started with the mouth. You can kind of see because it's almost caricaturized larger. Uh, but sometimes that can help. So if you're trying to make something a focal point, you can sometimes start from that aspect. Uh, so I've noticed that with my own work, but you know, I'm not sure if that's just me or what, you know, you just have to try it. And I just kind of keep pinballing around and illustrating on different parts of this. But the main reason of this particular video is to show you what you can accomplish even with uh, an Intuos uh, 4 or, you know, I'm using an Intuos 4 on this one, but it's, you know, not a direct to surface tablet. I'm drawing on the tablet looking up at the screen. And I know some people have commented on my channel about having some real issues with that and feeling like they need, you know, the Cintiq or the iPad Pro or whatever. And although I do use those products uh, quite a bit, I, I wanted to kind of reinforce and show people that you don't necessarily have to go to those. So every now and then I like to do a video where I just use this tablet. And, you know, there are definite pros and cons to each. Uh, one of the things I really like about using this particular tablet, uh, even though I have to sketch a little bit more to find my work, I tend to feel like the work looks a little bit more organic, uh, maybe because of the slight lack of control almost. Uh, so that's, I, I think that in turn can help you if you have like overly uh, tense anatomy and, and your characters look a, a bit too stiff. Uh, you kind of have to sculpt the lines with this particular tab, at least the way that I use it. So uh, essentially, just to explain that process, what I'm kind of doing is I'm almost just keeping the the pen tip on the surface the entire time and just finding out where I'm at and then just kind of maneuvering from there. Uh, again, because I don't have the confidence with the line stroke to maybe get it identically in place where I'm envisioning it, uh, but that's okay because it allows you to kind of sculpt and, and imagine and, and work through it. Um, one of the things I always stress about this is some of the best paint work I've ever seen has come off these types of tablets. So people have to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's not, you know, it's never, it's never the device, it's the artist, uh, for one, in the series of techniques that you employ to create your art. That's first and foremost. Uh, past that, it's the fact that, you know, given enough time, you'll overcome any you know, hindrance uh, that you have. You, you know, I've seen people create amazing artwork with uh, typewriters, you know. So it, it's definitely not the tool, it's the artist and, and the uh, amount of time and dedication you put towards it. The other thing is that, uh, the big one for me is that I don't have to posture up nearly as much as I'm drawing this. So I get to sit back and really just relax, kind of, where with my Cintiq model, um, I have to posture up a lot more. A uh, long day of drawing can actually make you sore. Uh, at least with the way that mine's set up and I haven't really been able to figure out anything better unless maybe I get some kind of ergonomic arm, which I'm just not, you know, I spent enough money with that setup. I'm not going to go out and buy a, an arm, not right away anyways, uh, to make it even better. But it, it's it's great. It's just you have to kind of work. It's bigger. It's a bigger device. So you have to kind of be at its mercy, so to speak, in the, the way that it's used. But then... With this particular tablet, I mean, I could pretty much just lean back in a recliner. Uh, if the screen's big enough or positioned properly, I could, you know, doesn't matter. You can sit any way you want. Like, one of the things that I've done is I actually uh, hooked it up to a big screen one time, or not one time, uh, a bunch of times now, and I sit back and draw on that, and that's kind of really liberating because you get all this extra real estate on your canvas, and you get to work, like, large format, which is really fun. Uh, I don't know that it's entirely productive for the way that I work, but because I use like multiple screens to be able to kind of execute my work a little more efficiently. Um, but that's that's one of the neat things about this particular type of setup. Uh, so now past that, you know, obviously then if you start comparing it to like a, an iPad Pro or something, then, you know, you've got kind of the best of both worlds there uh, as far as maneuverability and, uh, you know, a smaller tablet where you can recline and all that fun stuff. But but the only bad thing is you don't have access to all your applications unless you use some uh, external app or another secondary device uh, like uh, AstroPad where you can seize control of your, your desktop computer. So these, these all are like just pros and cons to each device. But the main one I keep coming back to with this particular setup is that you just have to, 
you know, kind of weigh the options of, you know, these, these are a lot cheaper tablet. Like you could probably get this in 204 that I'm using used or whatever for as little as I think 50 or 70 bucks, you know, and brand new, probably, you know, 150, 200. I, I really don't know what they cost right now, but, um, but the main thing is, is that they're a lot more entry level cost wise and you can still execute some pretty decent art. I mean, I'm not saying this is the greatest piece, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be determined on what level of artist you are, obviously, uh, myself, and you know, this is where I'm at. So this is about the range that I would create even on the other device. I just have to go back and rework it a little bit more. But like I said, I feel like I get a little bit more organic feel to the anatomy because of the way that I kind of, uh, draw on this particular device. So, and you know, you can still get in here and cross hatch and do all that stuff. And I guess that's a little bit of what I want to explain. So, uh, so let's see, I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to shade these characters back here. So I'll get like a nice heavier shadow, um, probably onto the, the forms here first, just because, you know, for one, these characters are in the background, so I want some good heavy shadows. I don't want to sit there and try to detail all these little aspects of the characters. Um, for one, they're not the focal point of the scene anyways. Uh, they're just kind of some background information. Uh, so I'll just kind of shade it in there. And you see my lines are a little bit more uh, scribbly or, or organic or loose or whatever. But that's okay. You know, it, it actually reminds me of what uh, another artist told me one time at a comic convention. I was showing him my work because he had like a really great kind of softness to his anatomy or just the right amount of soft and hard edges to the anatomy work. And I said, you know, could you look at my work? Tell me what you think. And he was like, you know, I think you're tensing up on the work too soon. So just try holding the uh, pen or pencil from the back and and draw that way for as long as possible. Then after you get enough of that foundational work in place, then start to come in and tighten up on your grip and do all your, you know, cross hatching and your detail work and stuff like that. And it was just like one of those things where it's like, wow, duh, that's that's a great idea. You know, I just never really, never really clicked to think that way. I always felt like, I had to have more control and, and always, you know, I'd tighten up almost immediately as I started drawing. Uh, so that's one of the things where this device kind of re-emulates that naturally because you're, you, you forego, you know, that, that idea where you have to be in full control of it. Um, but it, it's funny how another artist, uh, more experienced artist can just look at the work like that and immediately identify with something you might be doing wrong. That's also why I think critiques can be so helpful. You know, when you, when you're fortunate enough to see somebody that's doing it right and they can kind of look at it and tell you what they see, um, that, that can be hugely beneficial. So that's why I also always recommend artists go to like, you know, conventions and shows and try to meet up with other artists and, and learn from them in that regard. But that artist had a really great point and we just got to remember that sometimes we get a little too uh, focused on some little details and we're trying to you know, really get that line just right. And, and that's kind of, uh, you miss the mark sometimes when you do that, uh, especially with the anatomy where you want it to have these nice little bends and, and, you know, you don't want everything to be circles and, and angles and things like that. Um, so this kind of reminds me of that in a way, using this type of device and learning how to kind of get past the, uh, the feeling that it's maybe not as accurate as you're used to. Uh, but that's okay. It's just like when, you know, it's like, I said about painting on these, I think that some of the best, uh, paint work comes off these devices because you're, you don't, you forget about trying to get everything in just the right place. And you start thinking more about how you can edit that work and maneuver things and adjust things. And then you find out by the end of the painting, uh, if you do, you know, you execute enough of them, you realize that they come out better almost sometimes that way that you have, uh, what, Bob Ross would call happy accidents, you know, so you find those kind of gems by just not trying to overly control the entire process as much, you know, I mean, you, you got to have some control and you got to have a good idea of what you're trying to see in, in the work, but uh, there's a certain part where you just got to like, uh, you know, loosen up and let the process kind of take shape. So that, uh, that's kind of the main focal of that. Now I want to show you uh, real quick, just while we're here, um, you know, so this is what I'll do. I'll just kind of zoom in and sometimes I'll work from a distance. Uh, it's probably better to apply a lot of shadows from a distance. So I'll get in here and try to, 
you know, round out these forms. Uh, remember where my light source is uh, on each character and just uh, try to give it some more depth and, and more feel, you know. Um, now the other thing, like when I go to crosshatch and say I want to tighten up, uh, let's find an area here. Um, I got enough here in the arm. Maybe I'll work on the ribs here or maybe the shoulder. So I just want to show you that you can actually crosshatch with this setup. Oh, and just so you're aware, that blue that I put in there, that's just to kind of give me a better visual guide as I'm illustrating. This will probably end up being a painting, even though I'm doing all this crosshatching. I'm doing the shading more to kind of show uh, you guys in the process that you can pull off some decent shading with this type of device. Because that's one of the other comments that I got is like, you know, I can't I can't shade with it. I can't crosshatch. My lines look, you know, funny or whatever. Um, and one of the things I think that helps is that, and I've talked about this before, so forgive me if it's redundant, but uh, I seem to keep getting the, the same questions. Um, I always rotate the screen and I put it in place where I can just, my, my best pull uh, is a downward pull. So I pull a better line downward generally than I will sideways like that. So that was a good example because I can get a straight line this way, side to side I get a bit of a bended line. And you should try both, but I'm just telling you, I, I tend to go for my comfort level. So right now I'm using a downward pull, and I want kind of these separated uh, tapered lines. So I'm just kind of, you know, pulling the line multiple times till I get a taper to it. I scale the brush up and down based on the intensity of the line I think I want. Like that. And then sometimes I try to scale the brush down and tighten up the lines a little bit closer just to show some variation uh, in the types of lines that I put down. I try not to make, make them all the same way just because I feel like it'll make the piece look flat. And you see these aren't as clean. Like if I was to do this on my Cintiq or a iPad Pro or whatever, I'd really be able to control these lines. But I just want to show you that when you pan back like that, from this distance, it's going to look the same. So... You can compensate the clarity of the line by zooming in. And then the other thing is to rotate the screen to make it easier. Uh, and the other part, when people say that their lines look fuzzy or, uh, you know, I guess well, the big ones I get are the lines either look, don't look as clean. They'll say, my lines don't look as clean as yours. Um, which that could be just the time that I've spent rendering lines. So, you know, that could be part of it. The other part, and if you double click here, it'll rotate back. Uh, the other part is that you might have not have the resolution set high enough. So, uh, you know, if you get here, they start to look choppy. So you go to image, image size, make sure you're working at about 300 DPI. This is, you know, obviously like this sheet of a paper, uh, sheet of paper at 300 DPI. So that's part of it. The other part, let me show you the brush setting. This is a chalk brush. Um, this is a set that I created that you can get on my Gumroad, but the uh, settings for this particular brush are right here. So pen pressure, pen pressure, shape dynamics, set the pen pressure, brush tip shape, no spacing, or it only goes down to one. So that's the settings for the chalk brush. The other brush that I started with primarily in this, but it has more texture. If you notice all this is kind of a rough textured brush. That was the pencil brush right here. So this one's a bit more edgy and looks more like a pencil. I'll start with that, but then I'll clean up with the uh, the chalk brush, which is where I go to, right there. And I think I yeah I, I have to reset it because I actually like the transfer because it gives me a softer edge when I press lighter. So that's that's the brush settings, you know. And then like I said about the cross hatching, it's just really turning the screen, getting it right. And then you also want to try just a, a variety of types of lines. So you want some that are short, stout kind of lines, little tiny tapered lines. Uh, you want some that are that are really uh, elongated with less taper. And all of that gives you your, you know, your, uh, your shading. Uh, the other thing that I'll do is try some where I just basically uh, draw it on another, another layer so I can really kind of experiment. Uh, and that's a, something else I talk about. Like as I work through my, my artwork, uh, I create layers and I merge them down with Command E. And I, I do a lot of dark to light painting as well. So I, I paint uh, with black and then I paint back with white. 
and then I keep a layer below as white. Uh, so if you look, there's been a lot of edits, but you don't see those because the white's back here. And then this is that blue layer, uh, just to kind of help me paint visual depth, you know, to get a bit more of a guide to the depth that I want to see in it. So every time I'm experimenting, I'll add a new layer. And especially with this device, where like I said, I feel like I have a little less control uh, than I would have typically on my other devices. But I'm going to be honest, I, I'm going to start using this more. I, I think that there's a lot of pros to this device. It, uh, you know, I think that over time, if you're not so worried about the artwork looking so specifically crisp in every area, uh, which to me can be a hindrance anyways, uh, I think that in turn this device will actually be faster. You know, I've, I've seen artists, uh, one that I always talk about is uh, my buddy uh, Chris Scalf's work. You know, you can check him out on YouTube, and uh, uh, he just did a new book, which is really cool, um, uh, Werewolves vs. Dinosaurs. So be sure to check that out. Great guy and does some amazing work. He exclusively, uh, he has other tablets, but he, he does all his work on the same Intuos tablets, and, and I've talked about it before, and does this amazing work, like hyper-realistic and just fantastic, you know. Uh, and he just never felt the need to have to, you know, jump on the on board with the other tablets. And he found the strengths of this particular device and, you know, uh, went for it. So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you, if you don't allow yourself to think that the other tablets are going to fix your art. Because I think that's the other part that artists tend to do. They, they, uh, they go, well, this is going to make me a better artist. And I want to get better now, you know, and, and then they run out and spend the money and it doesn't necessarily do that. Uh, it will give you more control, but that might not be the part of your artwork that you have to fix. Control is not everything. Like, sometimes it's nice to lose control, <laughs> you know, so to speak. So it, it might be that you just have to work on your fundamentals or your anatomy or your, your lighting. Uh, like, uh, for me, that's one that, I, that I'm trying to study more right now is more texture and, and shading effects because there's just so much that it does for your artwork. And then you just have to remember that if the fundamentals aren't right, if, if you've got some real basic flaws in your work, uh, no amount of shading or texturing or cross-hatching is going to fix that anyways. So it's you got to get that foundational information in there, um, and then learn, you know, and then study the mechanics about yourself. Which way do you draw best, and uh, you know, try coming at it from different uh, techniques and, and effects or things. So yeah, so hopefully this video has been beneficial. I just wanted to get one in here that that kind of, I always feel bad because I'm, I'm doing all these videos. I'm like, hey, watch me draw on the iPad. Watch me draw on the Cintiq. And some people will say, well, I don't have money for that type of device or something like that. So I just want to make sure to show people that, hey, it's not, it's not all about the device. And, uh, you know, give these ones a shot and, and really push the envelope of what you can accomplish with them. And, you know, you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, and when in doubt, you can, until you get comfortable with this type of tablet, you can draw on paper and scan it in and, and do uh, drawovers of your own work. That's another good way to tighten up your skills and kind of bridge that gap. Because it did take me a few years to really feel comfortable with this type of device uh, and learn all the things, the workarounds that I could, you know, do on it. So. So yeah, so thanks very much for tuning in. Remember that you can follow me on Gumroad and my Patreon and support the work that I do here. It keeps me creating digital content. Uh, so I've got custom brushes and video tutorials on my Gumroad and stuff like that. So uh, if you can support, cool. I appreciate it. And more on the way real soon. So keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.